Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be talking about this uh, very unique project. Uh, it's an exciting way of building a basement without uh, impacting on the operational um, uh, workings of the hotel. Uh, when you think about this hotel, um, the the, the uh, annual revenues of this hotel is probably around about 70 million pounds. So shutting down this hotel uh, to do a five level basement would have been impossible. Uh, it's a fully occupied um, hotel uh, and, and a very famous hotel, um, uh, which royalties, um, uh, Hollywood stars, pop stars, uh, all visit um, and have been doing so for the last 100 years. So um, the project uh, is very unique um, because, sorry, I'm trying to go next slide. Thank you. Uh, this just gives you uh, the the space that actually was created. Uh, this is just the first level of basement. The existing hotel is founded on a hundred year old raft, uh, about one point uh, one meter thick, uh, and the uh, the the new client, um, the owners of Claridge's, wanted a five level basement underneath the hotel as I said, without uh, affecting the operation of the hotel or uh, impacting on the guests living above it. And this is just one image of um, uh, what it looks like. And the, the roof of this uh, first floor of the basement is actually the 100-year-old um, raft that you see. It, the raft was built in the heyday when people didn't quite understand how rafts performed um, because most of the foundations are mass concrete and this is a, a lightly reinforced raft uh, with uh, bars which are at, actually at uh, almost 500 mil centers. So it's, it's a lot different to what it is today. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the orange bit is the, the building of the five levels of basement uh, that would occupy the Art Deco wing of the hotel. The right right hand side of the wing of the hotel is almost 150 years old. And uh, we had the challenge of not just building a 23 meter deep basement, but actually, uh, and, and having 30 meter deep caissons that would support the, the existing structure, uh, which of course is not going to be demolished. Uh, we had the um, the luxury uh, of uh, uh, or the the extra challenge of having interconnecting services and shafts and tunnels, which will then connect up into the 150-year hotel. Um, this picture just shows you what we're trying to do there. The upper two floors would be gyms, spas, and pools. The lower three floors would be actually uh, back of office staff. Uh, all the plant which is currently on the roof would be decamped into the lower part of the basement, thereby creating almost uh, an extra 40 rooms um, on the, the, the skylight of the hotel. And each room is probably about a thousand pounds a night if you wanted to stay in it and the penthouses go for something like £15,000 a night and above. Um, so you can get an idea of um, uh, why the hotel could not be closed. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I would like to say that uh, this is the animation to demonstrate how we propose to uh, build the, the, the project right at the concept, concept stage. Um, is a two The basement at Claridge's is a remarkable engineering achievement comprising five levels over a depth of 23 metres below the existing Art Deco wing of the hotel. The design and construction were meticulously planned as there was no room for error. The most challenging part of the project was that the basement had to be constructed while the hotel's activities remained undisturbed. Guests would occupy the rooms above the live construction site. The first part of the project involved erecting an acoustic line gantry structure to allow loading and unloading vehicles without disturbing the guests. The Art Deco wing, approximately 1,200 square metres on plan, is constructed on a reinforced concrete bar foundation. A single room, only 7 metres square, was provided from which the entire construction would be carried out. 
This included all deliveries and the removal of excavated materials. Having formed an access opening in the raft, a shaft was excavated from which a tunnel was driven under the raft to the position of an existing column. A vertical shaft was then hand excavated to a depth of approximately 30 metres. The upper shaft was 1.8 metres in diameter and steel lined. The foundation caissons were 2.7 metres in diameter and concrete lined, some with under rooms up to 4.6 metres in diameter. On completion, they were filled with concrete up to the underside of B5 level. A pile cap and new structural column were then formed within the 1.8 metres shaft up to the underside of the existing raft. This proved a significant challenge with only a 450mm space between the column formwork and the caisson rings for the operatives to work in. At the column head, a cap was cast incorporating hydraulic jacks. These would allow the later load transfer of the hotel onto the new foundations and provide the facility for monitoring loads and adjustment. Following early success to the south, a second room and link corridor were provided to permit an access shaft to the north. This allowed caissons to be built from both ends of the site, eventually meeting in the middle. Once all 61 columns were complete and preloaded, the ground beneath the existing raft was removed and the load from the building transferred. Contiguous board piles were installed at the perimeter using a low headroom piling rig. This allowed a traditional top-down construction method to be employed to complete the five levels of basement. So, uh, next slide, please. Okay, yeah. Um, so this remarkable project uh, is 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 is, is um, showcasing how Victorian buildings, a hundred year plus, can be reused, modernised, and creating underground space fit for today's business models without actually demolishing a building. It can be done cheaply and with reduced carbon footprint. Uh, this whole area is about 50 meters by about 40 meters to give you a perspective on the size of the basement that we build below it. Um, much of the video has already explained all these things. The only thing I was gonna say is that's a single room at the top that we had, which is seven and a half meters. That uh, was the only space that we had from Claridge's as the working site for digging out all of this basement taking it through through a window in the rear of the property and out. All of the other places were back of office spaces that actually were inhabited and, and was a no-go area on the ground floor and above. Uh, these are the columns which are coming down below the raft, um, the old raft. So I'm not gonna go too far into uh, this, these, these, uh, these next cartoons. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So it just gives you the animation. It's ex already explained how this was all done. So um, I'm going to skip on to the next slide, please. Um, so really, I want to take you through a story, which is basically there was no precedence for actually building this basin anywhere in the world that we knew about or in Europe, okay? Um, not within an operational context, if you like, with guests living above it. Even the queen had many functions because she's a fan of, um, our queen is a fan of um, the hotel, and she didn't even know, and her security guards, guy, guys didn't even know that we were digging this basement underneath her, uh, uh, under, and then underneath her. Um, during the various venues that were there over the last three years. So getting started, we had a really a blank canvas, okay? We had absolutely very little information to go on, and we had to build up a story about how we would be able to go from a concept to a reality. And the client was very, um, he spent 15 years trying to actually get a, a contractor and a, build, a builder and a, uh, uh, and uh, a consultant to 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 realize his dream, and um, uh, no one would touch it uh, with a barge pole, really, uh, uh, until we came along and we said, yeah, we think we have a concept, but actually it is only a concept. It's not necessarily detailed design, and um, 
uh, he was uh, uh, he was very um, um, he understood the challenges because, he, as he said, as I said, he spent the last 15 years trying to get someone to build something like this. But actually, overcoming the ground risk was a, one of the key things, and so getting started, going from a concept to a reality, was was the key challenge. Next slide, please. Because of the live nature of the hotel, we were severely restricted in where we could do the site investigations. Here's a cross section of the geology, starting from the the top. Um, next slide. Our 90-year-old hotel raft sat on a two-meter thick layer of very soft clay that resembled tooth paste when disturbed, impossible to mine by hand. This was our first challenge. Next slide. The specialist grouting contractors um, had different views on how best to treat this uh, soft layer. However, none of the ideas were attractive as they apply, implied extensive shutdown and severe disruption to the hotel business. So we focused largely on increasing the strength and stiffness of this soft clay, this alluvium I refer to, through pumping water out, reducing the moisture content by creating suctions. We found that the most effective method was using vacuum dewatering technology from which only two rooms in the hotel we could create suctions to, to improve the strength of the layer across the whole site. This provided us with the opportunity to then create short-term phase stability for all the mining works um, done through adits and headings and tunnels underneath the raft. We recognized that this would induce settlements uh, under the existing raft, but we could control this by site observations and controls. And this was certainly one of those moments that brought us together as a design and construction team. We were going to rely on the care and consider expertise of those all around us. Uh, next slide, please. With vacuum dewater, it was important to prevent recharge of groundwater back into the site. We solved this by providing cutoff walls around the whole site. We had differing perimeter conditions. We were helped to the west by 1930s old sheet pile walls built at the time of this um, uh, uh, the hotel, uh, the Art Deco wing of the hotel. So we concentrated on mainly the north and south uh, areas, trying to cut off the water using a system of hard, soft seek and power walls to the south, tied back to the raft, and, and a, a water cutoff beam to the north. Next slide, please. We also had some um, very deep um, uh, issues uh, with, with the caisson foundation construction shown in black here below the basement slab. The strata we're dealing with is a, a stiff, the, the, the stiff strata, the 30 meters of uh, London clay is a stiff strata about 60 million years ago. Uh, um, uh, um, and and it's, it's a, a stiff material, but actually at near the bottom, it can have these sand inclusions as encountered on a tunneling project that you see there. And these sand inclusions are water bearing. So if you're not careful, you could actually blow a case on as you are building it. So one of the, the, the challenges was how we overcame all that um, uh, and, and, and address the risks associated with that, which I don't have time to discuss, but uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to explain later. The key thing I wanted to say is that the caissons had a bell at the bottom and we decided not to reinforce the caisson at all but to make sure that bells were excavated in concrete in a continuous 24-hour phase so that water would not uh, cause a problem. Uh, and if we had reinforced the caissons, it would have been a 48-hour period and we couldn't afford to leave it that far. Next slide, please. The, the key thing here is that while we were grappling with the ground houses, our structural mates, we worked closely with our structural and geotechnical mates within Arabs to try find out a bit more about this 90-year-old, 100-year-old raft, how brittle it was, because uh, it was in, built in the day when people did not have codes on how to build um, a, a reinforced raft. Uh, um, and as I said, um, 
one of the, the things that we could not do is actually investigate the existing raft until we got on the job. Um, and uh, when we got onto the job, we got the access area of the of the site and we cut a one meter block of raft out. And that was the time when we had um, a, a fuller understanding of the reinforcement um, in the existing raft and 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 and, and understand uh, whether whether the raft would would be too brittle caused caused by any ground moves we were creating by the mining act activity and whether we really had a job or not so up until we we had this exposed we had not a, a lot of idea about whether it we had whether the concept was a reality or not so next slide please Sorry, that's the that's the 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 slab that I was talking about. All we knew was actually it was four foot thick and about seventy five tons of steel uh, from nineteen thirty one. So next slide, please. We embarked on a series of numerical models uh, to look at actually the movement um, in the in the raft. We had some very clever geotechnical tools that actually looked at soil structure interaction. We had actually some very clever um, structural tools, this continuous surface cap model, where we could explicitly model the reinforcement. And as we push the, the raft downwards, we can see cracking happening in the raft, and we can actually see the bars turning red, in which case the bars are yielding. And we can actually then determine um, whether the ground movements we got from our soil structure into models would uh, would become an issue in terms of, um, uh, of 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 the raft and whether we had a a a a buildable solution or not and whether we can control the movements. This was one of those one of those rare moments where we realised where we needed to jack every column head to try and mitigate against any potential movements caused during construction. Next slide. And that shows you the numerical model with some uh, column heads at the top um, with some jacks in incorporated in that particular model. Next slide, please. We realized at the very beginning that we needed to do a number of trials to inform the buildability to inform the movements that would come 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 about, and that would inform the design. And until we did that, we did not we could not go forward into a detailed design. So we spent almost six months learning about how we might be able to build and control the movements in a in a manner similar to the video, the animation you saw. Next slide. So the first trial we did was to look at the adit. So this is an adit going directly underneath the existing raft. And we had to make sure that actually the miners could actually fit the heading frame. It was light enough for it to be manhandled and erected without any other equipment. And it could be bolted together safely to form the adit but more importantly, that we could jack the top of the, the frame underneath the raft, as you can see here, to control the settlement of the raft as we progress with these frames, okay? Um, uh, and also at the bottom, we had a, 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 a very tight lean mix uh, concrete to bed the frame in. So effectively, every half a meter of this frame as we went along the raft was jacked. So the the, the raft were, was led into, into the belief that actually it would not move too much because nothing had happened. Well, whilst in fact, we were opening up the ground underneath it. Next slide, please. The next thing was actually um, understanding how we would build it. So we came up with a, a lightweight temporary steel shaft rings bolted together in, in three or four segments, which we could be dismantled and recycled once we completed the top-down dig. 
So this is the kind of ring with people below it, you know, um, the mine is below it, digging down until we got to 30 meters. And this is just one of the 61 col uh, 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 shafts that we built. Um, and we came, got into the habit of actually building these things within one, one whole pile, 30 meters deep, including the caisson, including this temporary shaft, could be built within about two and a half weeks to three weeks. Um, next slide, please. And as we get closer to the bottom, this is now becomes the steel ring, which is only 1.8 meters diameter, can be then expanded out to a caisson, 2.7 meters diameter, and that's your pile, the caisson pile foundation, and that's concrete lined. Next slide, please. And that is, uh, it, and just having the 2.7 meter caisson wasn't good enough because we wouldn't get the capacity, so we had to bell them out to about 4.6 meters diameter. Um, and this is where the question of stability, avoiding the sands became very important. And this is where also you're at the bottom of the clay where you can get water seepages. And so our desire was to get out of the ground as quickly as possible by concreting it within a 24 hour period as soon as we expose that clay. Next slide, please. Uh, the next challenge was to build the column, of course. And we had a five stories of 600 mil diameter column, as you can see there, going up to the underside of the existing raft. And this is just the starter bars going through a 1.8 meter diameter caisson ring. So that was a very tight fit. Uh, once you got the rebars in place, the formwork in place, there was only 100, there was only 450 mil space left so uh, I'm a, I'm quite a thin guy I could probably work in there I'm not quite sure about some of the Americans who are quite big you know fitting themselves within the space around the the outside of the um, uh, the formwork and the steel ring but it needed people who could actually um, uh, erect this safely uh, and 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 were uh, able to do that uh, with the specialist knowledge that they have. And these miners were very specialist miners, very skilled miners coming from Ireland, uh, from the from Donegal. Um, so what really actually happened? Um, can we go on to the next slide, please? And so this is now, you know, once we've done our trials, we were in a better place to understand that we had a job, we had a pro project that could work. By then we'd already spent a few million quid uh, proving that actually uh, we the the project could happen. Mm. So this is what actually happened. Um, next slide, please. This shows all the um, the the tunneling. We could we named the three main tunnels: uh, uh, top and bottom, uh, top, middle, and bottom. Tom, Dick, and Harry after the Great Escape. Those are the, your your. Uh, your tunnels uh, with the people, uh, the miners going through, you come out left or right and you pick up the column above the hotel into the caisson and a new column that is built directly underneath it. Underneath it. So there is 400 meters of tunneling works, 1800 meters of caissons. Uh, next slide, please. And some of the challenges we had, which I won't go into too much in deep, is actually we had very tight fits for doing a contig wall, and we had to dismantle in four bytes, four, four bytes, a a small piling rig to get it down this two meter by two meter hole uh, in the raft uh, to in order to put the contig pile wall that was described in the animation. Uh, can I skip the next slide and go on to the next one, please? So, so we we went into next slide, please. We went into monitoring. Monitoring was really important. First, we had to predict what kind of movements we were getting, so we didn't crack the raft. And this.
This is a snapshot of the fact that actually we could get up to about 40 mil movement, 45 mil movement. That's about just a tad less than two inches, okay, uh, in the middle of the site. But actually the movement will depend on what kind of activity we had. Um, so understanding all this and understanding the performance of the, the raft, uh, not trying to crack it up um, would be really, really beneficial. So we went through a program monitoring all the columns. Next slide, please. Next slide, yep, okay. So so we fitted these jacks that you can see. One jack allowed you to um, address the movement uh, at the top of the columns. We had a, this the header detail. Uh, one jack to allowed us to uh, address the settlement. The other, uh, there were two jacks. The, the, the other jack was allowing you to uh, control heave because as you dug 23 meters down, the clay would heave upwards, okay? So uh, next next slide, please. This just shows that we were camped with laptops, etc., cetera, um, when we were trying to jack load into these, these columns before we could dig a basement. Uh, we did, uh, did that 61 times to pre-stress pre, uh, um, the, the columns before we dug a basement. Next slide, please. This gives you just an example of one of the columns um, that we um, uh, monitored. Uh, uh, as you, as uh, in September 2017, the whole raft, uh, this, but this particular location, had settled by 25 millimeters, and you can see the heave uh, as a rebound uh, as we dug the basement out. Um, the rebound is about 12 millimeters. Next slide, please. On the same column, um, you can see that at 25 millimeters, we pre-jacked a load at A of about 3.5 megamines into this, this, this column. But actually, uh, because we were building other caissons around the, 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 the same raft, the, the raft actually um, the, uh, the, the, uh, was, was, a, was like a transfer beam, okay? It, it transferred load into this particular column and it went from 3.5 megaNewtons up to 4.5 megaNewtons um, uh, point B. And as we dug the basement, um, we found that actually that um, uh, the, the basement digging was pushing, the, the heave pressures were pushing the, uh, the column, uh, the, 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 the foundation upwards. And you can see it's gone from 4,500 kilonewtons to 5 megaNewtons. So, the raft has the ability to transfer loads as you're building these caissons. So this is a, one of those moments where we had to, you can't just rely on a, take, a simple takedown of load from a structure without understanding how the raft starts to transfer load around the site. Next slide, please. And this just showed you what happened. So you can see the predicted behavior or measured behavior is less than the predicted behavior. Uh, what we measured was up to 33 millimeters movement uh, compared with uh, the one and a half inches, 45 millimeters movement we were expecting uh, from uh, predictions. Next slide, please. Yes. Um, we did very little damage to the hotel, fortunately, you will hear. Um, nothing really happened to the hotel, but the adjacent building, which was actually had already prehistoric cracks, uh, did um, have some cracks that I've shown on the yellow section, but the client owned that. And so that was dealt with uh, after the project. Next slide, please. So the project delivery, I've only got two more slides. Um, uh, next slide, please. We had a very delighted client in the end. Um, he got his his uh, uh, five levels of basement, which he, you know, he spent 15 years trying to get. Um, we completed the project four months early than in the uh, in, uh, than we expected because we were able to uh, speed operations up. We had to, we we had no safety issues at all. No accidents occur uh, occurred on any of the miners or any of the people on site. It was a very tightly honed um, uh, lessons learned every every day on uh, to avoid uh, with workshops on site every week you know to make sure that actually um, the miners at the end of the day were always safe there was no disruption to the hotel at all 
uh, we think that the three years that the the uh, the hotel was in op, uh, that we it took for us to build the basement uh, saved the hotel two hundred million pounds for an outlay uh, for the cost of this works to be around about forty million. So forty million pounds what was what was spent um, without fit out and. Um, uh, and 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 the client benefited with no closure of business um, for the tune of up to two hundred million pounds, and he had a massive upgrade on a on a Victorian hotel that would now meet the needs of his business needs. He had a sixty two thousand square foot of new basement with eighty additional rooms and suites uh, on the roof and other, in other places. He had modern leisure facilities everywhere. So I'm just going to end up. Uh, by saying thank you very much for listening to me and 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 these people next slide please are the people that we should be all thanking because these are the miners that did everything okay thank you very much Dinesh thank you for your presentation and I think that you gave credit to the people that made it happen at the same time I think you and your firm also deserve a lot of credit. As you said, uh, they've been looking for somebody to to go this route, to, to make it happen. Uh, and uh, without uh, your firm's uh, commitment to, to an involvement, uh, this would never have happened. It's a very interesting project. Uh, and you made it very clear that increased testing, or as you called it early, increased trials definitely saved, uh, saved money.